Toes, a series I've talked about quite a bit on this channel. For those of you who missed that video or are just not aware of it, to keep it extremely short, it's a series of games created by Zun, and it's gained massive international popularity thanks in large part to fan work surrounding the series. If you go out into the brave wide yonder of Toho fan works, you're bound to find something that strikes your fancy sooner or later. There's fan works that have an incredible amount of time and dedication to them, stories that can move the reader, games that act as a fun way to get new stories featuring Toho's wide cast of interesting and unique characters. It truly makes it a series that anyone, shoot 'em up fan or not, can find and enjoy with multiple sub-communities in it. This of course leads me to what I'm talking about today, FUMO. Or by extension, what happens when you take a subculture of the Toho fanbase, the FUMO community, and all the strange and wonderful things it brings, and then see what happens when fans of FUMO apply the same drive and inspiration to create fan works the main series itself has seen. So I went ahead into the depths of itch.io, and I took a look at a pile of FUMO related games specifically, as well as whatever the hell this is, to see what people in this community were able to throw together. I have very simple criteria here. This game has to feature FUMO as the primary aspect of the game. There's tons of Toho fan games out there and tons of people who have talked about them. And I can get that anywhere. And I understand that while many have FUMO references, I want to see what happens when you take specifically these funky little caricatures of the real deal and then throw them into the spotlight. First off, we have Racing Simulator from Honky Hood, who we're going to be seeing a couple times in this video. It's a first-person shooter released in February 2024 after a stint of Discord exclusivity, as it was mostly made as a way for the creator to have fun with their friends and test online features for other games. It's more of a prototype than anything, and it doesn't really have any real intention from the dev as of this moment to support the game outside of crucial updates. Racing Simulator started off as a project where they stacked a bunch of racins into a pyramid before adding weapons to it. And as they say, at that point, the rest was history. Why do I feel like FUMO and Heavy Artillery go together like chocolate and peanut butter? Why am I still going to talk about this like a full game? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. And when I do, I'm not going to tell you. Race the Simulator is team-based, with a rotation of maps each round that players vote on that feature different game modes as well as unique class variations. Most maps are deathmatch or control points, however there is also co-op as well where you attempt to take on AI FUMO creatures. The classes include Raisin, who acts as an all-rounder, Raisin with a sniper, which is Raisin with a sniper, Moon Raisin, who specializes in explosives, Tiwi, who wields heavy caliber weapons, Raimu, who acts like a bit of a glass cannon, Marissa is a root and tootin' gunslinger, the scout from TF2 is here, Madeline from Celeste, who can jump on walls, and Suika, a giant 3,000 health tank that can dish out ridiculous damage, but at the trade-off of being limited to one per team. Honestly, across the board, classes are pretty balanced by being unbalanced. This isn't a competitive FPS, it doesn't really need to be. Sometimes the game just becomes explosions and FUMO destruction, and that's totally fine. Every class is something that makes it a little bit stupid. Tiwi's explosives, race with the snipers, sniper rifles, Suica. They all come together into this chaotic, stupid experience when in heated combat. As well as gameplay, Razor Simulator also has a building mechanic. You can put up lights, light bonfires, put up barricades which you can upgrade over time, place healing dumpsters, set tables, or my favorite, place catapults to throw yourself long distances. There's actually a surprising amount of depth here to go into. Creative big-brained funky fumos have figured out the art form of using the catapults to get some real distance leading to dumb situations like this where you end up in places you shouldn't get to. Once again, not a serious FPS sort of thing, but I wouldn't really have it any other way. It helps add an extra layer to the chaos when some psychopath is able to launch themselves in Mach 7 across the entire map with all the grace of the cutest brick going through a window. You can also ping areas that have enemies or to point people to where you want them to go, or you can just annoy your team with it. Your call. There's also voice commands that are lifted from all over the place, which I find hilarious. It's really funny to hear scouts laugh coming from these silly plushies. I think what I enjoyed most, however, was the small community playing this game. I was actually really reminded of my time playing Team Fortress 2 playing this game. It managed to capture that same vibe extremely well. Not so much with the gameplay. It's pretty average here. Classes aren't exactly going to make people rethink how the TF2 mercs should play. But sometimes fighting would just suddenly stop as everyone knows something silly, or everyone would collab together to accomplish something stupid like building a structure on the side of a building or trying to launch Suikas. People would spam voice commands, you'd have friendlies hiding from combat and being silly together. It really took me back to a simpler time in a way. I think the nature of FUMO themselves does a lot for this. They're kind of inherently silly. I mean, honestly, how can you be angry playing a game where there's just a bunch of silly plush toys sliding across the floor? You can't. 
I honestly think it's a bit of a shame that this is just staying as a prototype and currently as of the time of recording there's no real plans for any expansion because I really think there's something here. This silly little game took me back in a lot of ways and it was a lot more fun than I initially expected given that prototype title. It's a really fun little thing that you should definitely check out if you have the chance. A little nugget of fun. Along the same lines, from the same developer we also get our second game, Toho Fumo Racing, a kart racer currently under active development. You see, we had to go from talking about a game where you shoot Fumo to a game where when you lose, you'll want to shoot Fumo. It's very heavily inspired by stuff like Mario Kart. You select your racer and vehicle, and then your racer variety of tracks either as a single race or a Grand Prix. It has some real tricks up its sleeve, however, and I think it might really surprise those looking for a Mario Kart fix who don't just want to play, you know, Mario Kart. Toho Fumo Racing's vehicles and vibe are, as you'd expect, a little bit sillier than other kart racers. Finally, I get to live out my dream of flying down the road in a shopping cart without the risk of injury. Instead of banana peels, you put down frogs, your speed boosts the power pickup from the mainline Toho games. You get blown up entirely by your opponents, and the light nature of how the Fumo handled means that the game can lean a lot more heavily into building up boosts through jumping a lot, which makes it incredibly addictive to get really fast times and encourages experimentation in finding new shortcuts and strategies. This has led to an active community of people speedrunning the maps on their Discord server. It manages to succeed in both having a wide range of depth while still being relatively easy for a newcomer to pick up and play without too much need to worry about learning crazy mechanics or anything. Also, unlike many other kart racers, Toho Fumo Racing lets the intrusive thoughts win sometimes. It doesn't have to take itself seriously, so why not have a hundred racers on a small track? Or make it so your kart moves so fast that just tapping the accelerator sends you to another dimension. You can set your speed and gravity to whatever you like. The game invites you to go ahead and break it if you feel like it. Just freaking standard, bud. I think it's really a testament to the quality of this game that even at this point in development, it has the fundamentals so nailed down that even if I do something unhinged like this, the game is actually still sort of playable in its own way. I actually think there's something that some other games could learn about the level of customization and gameplay that's going on here. And it means that the game isn't going to get dull too fast despite having a relatively small pool of content at the moment. I've been keeping an eye on the development of this game for a while now, and with each update it feels more and more like it deserves to have a spotlight put on it. It's an incredible little kart racer with a dedicated dev team and community, a fun discord for it, and it really manages to capture a lot of that FUMO spirit in a lot of ways. I love this little game. In the process of making this video, I noticed a surprising amount of games where you beat up FUMO. That's not funky at all. So instead I'm going to be talking about fun cookie clicker gameplay. Pet the FUMO is a sort of idle clicker type game, and it's notable for me for getting to close it when I was working on this video the entire time I was working on this video. It claims to provide the FUMO petting experience for those of you poor souls out there who haven't been blessed with a FUMO of your own in your life. You start off the game by aggravating your carpal tunnel by clicking, almost derailing your entire week in one go because you have no self-control and you need to click really fast no matter what. Good work, me. Then you start unlocking power-ups. These increase your passive PPS, or pats per second. Once you get 10 of a power-up, you get some bonus ones, and your pat total is used as currency to keep buying more. Each time you buy a different type of pat, it goes up in price, so there's a bit of micromanaging to make sure you're getting the most value out of them. Eventually, you'll also unlock more Fumo to pat. I'm really explaining a clicker game for a video. Okay, look, it's cute. If this is your cup of coffee, you can leave it running at work for a quick distraction. I appreciate the pixel Fumos. I appreciate the squeaky toy sound when you pat the Fumo. The creator drew this image of Cherno. That's about all I have to say. But don't worry, I'll check on things later to see how many pats we can accumulate before this video is done. Now, I did notice a bit of a theme while working on this video. People love to try and make these gremlins into the spooky. And there were a lot of horror-themed FUMO games to choose from. Problem is, most of them were just FNAF. Like, a couple I tried had some unique mechanics, but for the most part, I was just playing FNAF with a FUMO skin. And while that might be up some people's alleys, hello everybody, my name is not Markiplier. I will be taking a look at this instead. Cheer now, FUMO, the horror game. Oh great, now I'm PewDiePie. Cheer no Fumo the Horror Game is a slender style horror game developed by Semi9. You need to navigate a maze in order to gather 9 power pickups in order to survive against the Cheer no Fumo who, like many of Fumo, has developed a taste for violence. You don't have a whole lot of note to defend yourself with, so it's best to avoid Cheer no at all costs. But you do have some options should she spot you. Cheer no is faster than you, and she will catch you. But should you hide in one of the lockers scattered around the map fast enough, she'll instead slam face first into it like a dumb, stupid, dumb, dumb idiot. Before scuttling off. After she slammed into the locker, leaving it will cause the now damaged door to fly off, meaning you won't be able to hide in that locker again. You're in near darkness, but you do have a flashlight to help light up the area around you, but at the trade-off of making it easier for Cherno to spot you. 
If she catches you, she will rapidly accelerate towards you, and if she grabs you, you get a Fumo jump scare before being booted back to the menu. Power pickups make a humming noise, and Chirna will make one whenever she moves, meaning that you really want headphones for this one so you can easily tell where everything is at at a given moment. Locations for your pickups are randomized, so you can't rely on memory alone to get you through, and while Chirno does wander a lot, she does tend to stay around where you are. You don't really get a lot of windows where she just isn't around. Once you collect your nine power-ups, they turn to a burger, and Chirna will stop what she's doing and approach you wherever you're at. At this point, she has been turned docile by the sweet scent of tasty hamburger, and giving her a burger will end the night. There's two nights in the game, with the second one having a larger maze to navigate than the first. Chirna's honestly a bit of a pain in the ass to deal with here. You can run into these situations where she'll be camping at a spot you need to go. Sometimes it feels like she'll just stay in a room that you need to be going into forever. She'll hang out like right outside a locker you're in for a silly amount of time. There were times I swear to god this AI was just trolling me where she'd leave the room then immediately turn around and come back. Occasions to just stare at the pickup you need to grab. I mean, you can't collect it unless you want to uh, bite it. She's surprisingly aggressive when she starts moving, and it creates a tension because you really don't want to get caught when you're right about to finish, and suddenly she appears around a corner and sends you to the Shadow Realm. Also, I'm not sure if it's placebo, but playing through both nights a couple times, I noticed she gets really aggressive right when you're about to finish up, but I could be wrong. Your reward for finishing both nights is Cherno's friendship, as well as a bunch of modifiers for the game to add some replayability. It's time to make it easier. Would someone please turn on the goddamn lights? Thank you. Some will make it harder instead, like making Chirna more aggressive or sneaky. Some make the game more downright funky, like giving you a crouch or jump that literally served no purpose. There's also a top-down mode, which, while neat, does sort of trivialize the game a bit. I wish there was a way to add more one Chirna in the maze or something to add some extra insanity, but I kind of see why that's not going to work. Still, if this kind of game's your bag, it's worth checking out, especially if you're not generally a fan of loud jump scares a lot of these games end up using. It's drop dead simple, but it's also a pretty fun way to kill half an hour or so. Fumofication is a top down roguelike shooter released by Hafan and Nelin, and it's probably the least Fumo y of the Fumo games I've covered. You play as a Yomu Fumo out to shoot hordes of enemies with your Phantom in order to clear rooms, collect random power ups, and carry on to the next area. Not sure why she left her sword at home, but that's besides the point. It also has the distinction of being the first game ever to give me mild motion sickness, unironically. See, each room has these set patterns, grass theme, cherry blossom theme, this tiling. All of them move a little bit while you play, but the tiling, I don't know what it is. I literally started getting nauseous towards the end of playing this game. I, I know it's just the style of the game itself, and I can't really knock it too hard for that. And like, if the floors are just static, it might look a little bit bland. And it might just be me, but I did think it was worth noting. It really threw me off a little bit, and I felt kind of off after playing this game for a long time. Enemies here are either these little guys or ghosts. The little dudes do HP damage, and the ghosts do SD damage. You have no invulnerability frame, so it's really important to keep a distance as best you can, because enemies will just dogpile you and turn you into a corpse at instant speed, should you let them stay close to you. And this is a bit easier said than done. The spaces can be a little bit hard to navigate, while there's a pile of enemies swarming at all angles. You can't retreat once you enter a new room for the first time, and the ghosts can go through walls to make a beeline right for you, meaning you either have to prioritize getting away from them or dealing with them first, or you're going to take too much damage too quickly. There's a lot of trade-offs you have to consider on the fly when it comes to taking damage. Do you run through some little dudes to take those hits, or let a ghost get a few hits on you? Alongside this, whenever you clear a room, there's a chance for a random sparkle to show up, and you have the option of picking it up. Generally, it's some sort of stat modifier with pros and cons to you. Sometimes you get lucky and it's just a good roll or you have no drawbacks. Sometimes it'll just be an HP or SP pickup. Occasionally a pickup will drain your HP or SP, and this can take you to zero health, so probably a good idea to pay attention. Luckily, you don't have to pick these up right away. You can come back as long as you come back before leaving a level if you want. Just don't listen to what the exit portals tell you. I played for hours and never found a way to return once you left a level. Not to say it isn't possible, but after a two-hour session, I hadn't been able to go back a single time. So either it's not properly explained or it's totally unimplemented. That said, being able to mull over power-ups while completing a level creates an interesting situation where you can treat health pickups as an additional resource to spend, and as you get more powerful, your health actually starts to become more like a currency to spend rather than a survival resource. I really enjoyed weighing out how to get the most value for my HP when power-ups called for an HP cost that wouldn't instantly end my run. Most pickups you see will have pretty awful drawbacks, however, which kind of left me feeling like I was going to regret grabbing anything at first and led to me being a little bit conservative with my choices, ending runs extremely early. But then I started picking up dodge chance power-ups and at any expense short of it, setting my life to zero. Because as great-grandpappy Rin once said, If they don't hit you, you 
you can't die. <sighs> Shame he's no longer with us. He died doing what he loved. Spreading into oncoming traffic. The music here is pretty solid, but it's one looping track over and over, which after a while gets a little bit much to listen to, especially if you're going into a longer play session. And it seems like overall, this game is really stuck in an early build, with the devs seemingly moving on to other projects these days, which is a shame. As it is now, I think there's actually good bones here to be expanded upon, but as it stands currently without expansion, it becomes a lot more of a bummer in the end. Uh, there's little room for creative builds, and pickups eventually become redundant, as you seemingly hit a cap for how much benefit you can get from a stat with no way of knowing what your stats actually look like, which leads to this extremely underwhelming feeling going from level to level with no real progression or feeling of it. Only having two enemy types compounds this, and by the time I was passing level 10 or so, I was just hoping each and every level that the game would just throw something different at me, and it never happened. As it is now, it's a cute little proof of concept, but it's the game I left feeling the most bummed out about. I love a good top-down shooter from time to time, and I think this one had a lot of potential, it's just not there yet. Well, there were definitely a few FUMO games I missed here, mostly horror-themed, Night of the FUMO shows a lot of promise, but my brain is too small to figure out how to complete a night without getting evicted for FUMO possession. Much like real life, I don't think I could escape these things if I tried. And beyond that, there's stuff I just don't really have a lot to say about. Fumo Run and Toho Bird Up are cool arcade score games, and I'm not getting a terrible graphics 16 emulator today, so this one's off the table. Uh, but I think I can come to a good general consensus here. I think it's extremely fascinating to take a look at what the Fumo community has cooked up. It has the same sort of chaotic energy that the Fumos themselves tend to bring to the table, and all these games had this sort of underground feel to them that I'd almost be disappointed in it being polished, as that polish would kind of go against what Fumos sort of are. Even the most polished FUMO games, I think, understand that these little gremlins at the end of the day are silly, funky, and shouldn't be taken seriously. A lot of these projects were tests or an entry point for beginner developers who have gone on to create non-FUMO games, and I think that's super cool. I'm not 100% sure if it's the case, but if these plushies ended up getting people into game development, it kind of comes full circle. Toho is an independent series which down the line spawned FUMO, who in time have come to inspire more independent games and series coming along through its own subculture. Some of these games are short and simple, and almost all are currently under development or will never see a finished development, but they're really super cool and worth checking out if any pique your interest. Now, back earlier I promised we'd check out that clicker game and see how things are going, so let's go ahead and do that. Where's the FUMO? Oh no! Thank you.